bus. <laughs> What's that, five, six in a row now? I don't know, I counted seven maybe. It'll never happen again. Oh wait, oh look, there's Molly. Wow, I, I haven't seen her in ages. Can you just pull over and we can say hello? Malls! Clara! Oh, it's wonderful to see you! Well, you can't miss us all today. <laughs> is this your handsome bus driver? I didn't call him that. Molly, this is Peter. Peter, this is Molly. I've heard. Heard what? You'll be joining us, I hope. Joining you here outside? On the big march? From Aldermaston, the atomic weapons factory. This time we're all going to start there, then march on London. Straight to Parliament. Tens of thousands of us. They'll have to listen to us this time. Four days walk, isn't that right? Seems a bit excessive. Worth it to save the world, don't you think? It's a waste of time, isn't it? If this is a waste of time, I'd like to know what really was worth someone's time. Oh, sorry, uh... Peter, Molly is a lecturer at the college too, when she's not showing me the ropes or working on her opus. Oh, that's all done now. The paper's published. Oh, that's wonderful. Good riddance too. I couldn't bear having it hanging over me any longer. <clears throat> uh, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. I can focus on this for a while. Much more important. Do you think this will make a difference? It jolly well has to, don't you think? Considering what's at stake, we're all under threat. I would have thought as a man of science you'd know all about it. Clara mentioned you'd been studying radiation carried by the clouds. Seems Clara's told you all my secrets. Well, I didn't know it was an official secret. No, no, it's, it's not. It's not. That's... it's fine. The radiation is what's terrifying. One hydrogen bomb could kill one million people in an instant. But then the radiation spreads and could kill millions more. Slowly this time. The British government is building more bombs when they should be doing the opposite. Disarming. Setting an example to the world. Wouldn't that let our guard down? Isn't, isn't that what the Soviets want? We're not naive, you know. We want the three sides to stop entrenching themselves. All this posturing of theirs can only end one way. It's got to be unilateral nuclear disarmament. Otherwise, every day we are one step closer to the end. Well, I agree, although with any luck they'll thrash it out. And what if they don't? Right, uh, I've got a lecture to give. Peter, would you mind if I had a lift for the last mile? Of course not. It was good to meet you, Peter. Uh, pleasure's all mine. You're coming on the march, aren't you, Clara? I wouldn't miss it for anything. And you, Peter? I, uh, I... I've rather too much work, actually. Don't think I'll get away. Shame. Well, in the meantime, I'm sure Clara will take very good care of you. She will? That's enough, Molly Shanahan. We'll be off now. You go and get your bus, Clara. Ding, ding! <sighs> Impressive, isn't she? No more than you are.
You know what I'm gonna say? I've got a pretty good idea. You need to get out more. I have to work. Oh, come on, old chap. I have to say, I've never really understood it. Here you are writing about clouds, and yet you never see the sky. What do you know? I've got a lot of writing to be getting on with, Joe, so if you could... Well, let's see some of these words then, shall we? Come on. Man or a mouse. It's not like his top secret, is it? You can trust me. What do you think, Sam? I'm sure some of it is very good. Here. It will be good. First rate. Don't worry, old chap. Well, we'll hit that wall sometimes. It's all part of writing a paper. Oh, now, come on, don't be so modest, Sam. You dashed yours off in a few months. Well, maybe I was fortunate, but the point is... The point is, you set your sights straight and true, sat down and wrote the damn thing. It wasn't quite like that. Well, you did it. Now here you are, senior lecturer. Which makes two of us. <sighs> did Joseph not mention he got a promotion too? It does tend to slip his mind for a few seconds occasionally. Well, you know what could be open to him if he gets this right and gets promotion? His own department, eventually. Professorship! You can't reach those heights if you stay in this hovel for the rest of your life. Well, that's true, but I wouldn't My point quite was put it. that saying to Peter it's all part of the process is just kind words. But what we need to do is help our poor friend here be a man and write. All right. All right. Maybe I could use a little help here and there, but I don't need any pity. Oh, it's not pity. We believe in you. We just don't want to come back and have the same conversation. Just don't start again. That would be a disaster, wouldn't it, Sam? I think he's right, Peter. I know it's tempting to want to forget everything and start again on a blank page, but then you're risking making the same mistakes all over again. You know, sometimes it's better to see where you've gone wrong, that's all. That it help you. Good things might come of it. Good things like a promotion, I might add. Like Joseph says, don't start again. All right, then. What do you suggest, sir? I know what you need. Go on, then. What? What you need is some inspiration. Those three new girls. You know the ones. Undergraduates. They'll be at the Fox and Hounds this evening, and so, my good man, shall we? Eight o'clock. See you there? All right, all right, I'll come. I do hope so. And this isn't you palming us off again, I hope. Although I was almost hoping you'd say no, so there'd be two of those girls for me. Come on, let's leave him to it. Good luck with it. We'll see you later. Don't be shy, Peter. Come along. Man or a mouse? Oh, there you are. Seven o'clock, I thought you said. Oh, fashionably late. <laughs> Come sit, I got you some tea. Oh, great idea, thank you. Uh, sugar for you? Yes, two for me, please. Okay. Oh my goodness, you're soaked. Where's your jacket? Oh, uh, well, uh, not on me, of course. Um, mind on other things. The paper, again? Still all consuming? I can handle it. Oh, I don't blame you. I've been thinking about it quite a bit too. Uh, you have? Ab about my paper? Yes. To tell you the truth, I'm rather stuck. I gathered. Could you finish it for me, do you think? I thought you could handle it. Uh, I can, I can. It's... Well, it's a, it's a beautiful idea. I think that's why it stuck with me. I know, I know. It, it could be something great. It could. It would be like <laughs> having a superpower, being able to predict the paths of the clouds. <laughs> And next step, control the weather. <laughs> you could be 
explode, man. Are you taking this seriously? Well, you could predict when it's going to rain, at least. <laughs> this weather reminds me of home. Was it this miserable all the time? <laughs> no. Although Edinburgh always looked better in the rain to me, so that's why I choose to remember it. That's where you grew up, isn't it? That's right. I had a wee cottage in the Highlands, too. Our parents would take us up there once in a while. Us? Brothers and sisters? One brother. Older. Are you all right? Yes. Sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to pry. It's just, um... He was killed in a motorcycle accident near the cottage when he was uh, 18. Oh, so sorry. It's not your fault. It's life. Or, well, the opposite. <laughs> How old were you when it happened? Uh, 16. But still, I have a lot of happy memories about him. Oh, at the cottage, he always used to get up early, go out into the forest, bring back armloads of wood, wood for the fire. It was sweet, really. The house was already warm for us. I like the sound of doing that. I could do that. Grab an axe, go out each morning, chop wood. So you could be the woodsman, then. Oh, better than the cloud man. Stronger. Oh, no, I, I, I like cloud man. So, these clouds, you're a beautiful subject. What do you think you need? Oh, well, that's simple. More readings to work with. Hmm, sounds achievable. Well, in theory, yes, but they need to be first-hand, verifiable. All right. I take it it all has to be taken somewhere where the readings aren't affected by other factors? Sounds like you've got it as much as I have. Maybe. <laughs> the thing is, it needs to be somewhere very remote, and I need to be there for a while, you see, to get enough readings. Mm, that makes sense. And I suppose the university budget doesn't exactly allow you to travel the world. Maybe. What? Well, that cottage I mentioned, it's in the middle of nowhere, the highest place for miles around. And now would be the time to go with summer coming up. All summer free? Well, I'd have to check with my father, but it's remote. It's just a little place in the woods with a log fire and not much else. But if that's what you're looking for, I am. That's just the kind of place I've been searching for. Promise me you're serious about this? Oh, I promise you that. Mm, promise me that. Anyway, no more past tense. No more past tense, eh? Hmm. Sorry, I didn't know how I felt about the cottage until I started talking about it. I shouldn't have said anything. You absolutely should have. It's a... It's a great idea. Mm, I'm full of them today. I think I'd be able to find somewhere else, you know. I must be able to. It's just... I don't know what my father would say about me bringing an unmarried man up there. Well, if you're worried about your father, we don't need to go. No, no, I'm not worried about him. He's just not exactly Morden. Not exactly. Ringing the changes like malls. Oh, her father even knows what she's up to. You should have seen Moles on that march, striding forward in front. Shame he didn't come. Quite the force of nature. Do you think the bus would make it there? The bus? That would cost a fortune. Not that bus, silly. <laughs> you know, your bus. Ding, ding. Oh, oh, the mighty steed. Of course. Well, the roads are pretty rough. Would you cope with it? You can always try. Oh, careful. We want to make it in one piece. We do. I didn't suggest the route. Just keep driving. I know it seems to go on forever. Just trust me. The cottage is only a few miles away now. How are you feeling about this? Oh, uh, uh, 
I'm fine. Okay, a bit strange, to be honest. Like I'm about to step back in time. I haven't been here in so long. I'm a bit nervous. I, I don't know. I, I don't quite know if things will feel different coming back. I hope you like it. Oh, I, I'm sure I will. And, and thank you for asking your father. I know this is a big thing. <laughs> well, I told him I was taking a friend. I didn't mention you were a man. Oh, uh, do, do you think he'd disapprove? Not exactly, no. Well, he is very old-fashioned, but... Well, thank you for coming along. Well, in, in, inviting me and coming along. Oh, no. I mean, without me, who'd you find it for a start? I couldn't rightly let you run away all by yourself. So you're running away with me? Stop it. This is purely professional, isn't it? We could run away. Ditch the paper. Live in the woods. You are being presumptuous, aren't you? No, I'm here to help. You'll need help with the equipment and recording all the data, all that. I couldn't leave you stranded up here in the middle of nowhere. I'd build us a shelter, be the man of the woods. Oh, he's back, is he? The woodsman. I'm telling you, I could do that. Just be the kind of man who remembers to fill up the tank when we're off to the middle of nowhere. Well, I am. I hope this isn't a big mistake. in Washington over the renewal of the Antarctic Treaty were in deadlock last night, with Soviet Russia threatening to walk out of discussions early. The new president, Lyndon B. Johnson, made an impassioned speech during which he criticized the Soviets' aggressive stance and reasserted the need for compromise. The president described the Russians as playing a lethal hand and asserted that continuing to do so would risk leading the world into war.